everyone, and welcome to the 2021 Vertical Blue Freediving Competition. My name is Rachel Novak. And I'm Sean Russell Harmon. And we are here and we are already diving. This is our second diver of the day. So down below, or we are just now starting, and I'm going to be a little quiet, we have Alejandro Lemieux. He is going to be diving in 30 seconds. Alejandro is going to be doing a constant weight dive to 95 meters with an announced dive time of 3 minutes and 4 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, official top. So this is Alejandro's seventh time at the Vertical Blue Freediving Competition. He has an announced depth of 95 meters, and he is going for a Mexican national record. about free diving you hit something called a sink phase or free fall mm. and so the free diver is negatively buoyant at this point and so they can basically hold perfectly still and stay relaxed and for many divers this is one of their favorite parts of the dive so the idea is to get as much power at the top and then get into a free falling mm -hmm. motion Exactly. So you get into the free fall motion, and then here, this is where the free diver can conserve their oxygen and their energy. And once they're in this, does it usually take them all the way down to the to the bottom? Yes, that is the goal. And so now Alejandro has gotten the bottom plate. He has a white tag, and he is on his way back up again. has just met him and is accompanying him to, to the surface. There is our second safety. So far he's looking smooth. All right, and he has surfaced. His airway is staying out of the water. And as you can see here, all of the safeties in the white shirts have their arms off of him. They cannot be touching him at this point. And he has just showed the card. Wow. And he's just received a white card. That was incredible. How long was that? I did not see the dive time on that. Ideally, a free diver will have a dive time when they are going down at about one meter per second. Uh -huh. That is what people are aiming for. 
Um, and so just in the future, we can look into that a little bit further. So now the safety team is pulling up the dive line a little bit. And we are getting ready for our next free diver. So how many competitions a year do these divers usually do? Um, some may just do one. Yeah. Um, I don't know the max, but I have heard of some divers doing five or six and even more. Wow. And when they're at these competitions, this is the only time that the it's really recorded, right? Yeah, runs, unless they... you unless you have somebody going down with you, and the majority of the cameras are not rated to go that deep, or yeah. the divers that are going to be doing the safety for them are not going to be going all the way down. Mm -hmm. Here we have dive eye, and dive eye is rated to go up to 200 meters, so okay. they can get a significant amount of every diver's dive. Our next competitor is Roberto Guzman. He is from Mexico and he lives in Playa del Carmen. He is doing a constant weight dive of 90 meters. His personal best is 100, 100 meters with a monofin and 92 meters with bifins. So he is going below his national record or below his personal best. So my guess is he is playing it safe. It is the first dive of the competition for him and you just want to get off on the right foot. And for the course of the competition, it's each diver gets six dives, correct? That is correct. And they add all the scores up? Yes, but it is a little bit different. You will have three different disciplines mm -hmm. in this competition. So we are taking the best dive of each discipline. Okay. So a diver could theoretically do all of one discipline with their six dives, or they can split them up. Two, two, and two? Yeah. I think I did the math right on that. That's, <laughs> I think that's six. Congratulations. Thank you. You did have your coffee today. <laughs> I did. There we go. Two cups to be exact. Oh, two. I yes. only had one.
Okay, and Roberto is beginning his dive. Let's go, Roberto. 20 meters. So Roberto trains in some of the cenotes near Playa del Carmen, where he also lives, and he teaches freediving the cenotes. in the free fall free or the fall. sink phase. Is that the correct term, sink phase? Is that what I should say from now on? You can say either free fall or sink phase and any free diver will know what you are talking about. It just depends on who is going to be doing the teaching. They're both perfectly fine uh, terminology. All right. So he is now at 84 meters, getting close to that bottom plate. And do you see that striped part of the rope? Yep. That is called the candy cane. That is where, as a diver, you can touch the line, you can do whatever you need to grab that tag and come back up to the surface. Okay. And what is that, like uh, three feet, four feet at the bottom? Uh, that is actually three meters. Three meters. Yeah. And do you see that thing that attaches him to the line? Uh -huh. That is called a lanyard. So hypothetically, if anything were to happen, this is how we would be able to retrieve the diver. This is the safest way to keep him along the line. And this allows the safeties to have an expectation of where to meet the diver. If you see the judge in the red at the surface, which our viewers won't be able to see. She is actually holding onto the line and you can feel the line and feel the diver in their movements during the dive. Okay. And he is now reaching the surface, doing his recovery breaths. He gave the okay sign. He reached for that tag, he has the tag, and now we are awaiting the judge response. White card. White card. White card. Congratulations. Nice job, Roberto. Does anyone come up like happy, like okay, right away? Or is every, every time they kind of have that five, six second you know, I am actually still fairly new to the competitive freediving community. I do know that the most important thing when you're coming up from your dive is to do your recovery breath. Uh -huh. That is something that you will learn in a beginner freediving course should you decide to do that. The most important thing when you come up is to do your recovery breaths. Okay, our next diver is into the water. This is Denis Gromer. He is diving for France and he lives in Tahiti. He is the only Tahitian depth competitor. He has announced a free immersion dive, which is where you are pulling yourself down the line. His free immersion depth is going to be 90 meters with a dive time of three minutes.
All these competitors live in the most amazing places. I think I messed up in life. I think I should have been a free diver living in Tahiti. It is not too late. <laughs> I think for me it is. I can't even hold my breath enough to tie my shoes. I think it's possible. Did you know that the urge to breathe is actually caused by a buildup of carbon dioxide? So if you're holding your breath and you feel like dying, mm -hmm. but you're putting, you have a pulse oximeter on your finger, um, most of the time your oxygen saturation will still be at a fairly high level, even one to two minutes into your breath hold. Really? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a mind over matter. You have to train yourself to... Be comfortable with the CO2. Yeah. So now Denis is preparing for his dive, so we are going to be quiet until he is below the surface. preparation for the dive or are they doing specific types of breathing? Is everyone different? It is very different from free diver to free diver. Uh, the most important thing for a diver to do is go down feeling relaxed. So there is a lot of mental preparation going into this. As you see there, he is making some interesting motions with his mouth. If a non-free diver looks minutes. at that, um, that means nothing to them. But for other free divers, what he is doing is something called Packing. Okay. So he is sipping air into his mouth and pushing it down into his lungs. Okay. I mean, that's got to take a lot of practice before you... I mean, I can, I can only imagine getting cramping if you don't do it correctly. Yeah, so it's actually very important for non-free divers or new free divers to not do this. Um, this takes plenty of years of training because a lot of these competitive freedivers have been freediving for years mm -hmm. and have built up the lung flexibility to have the lung capacity that packing allows. He has started his dive. Okay, so this one's different. He doesn't have fins on. 
gets. This is a discipline called free immersion, and free immersion is where a free diver is using the line to pull themselves up and down. He will eventually hit free fall or the sink phase, and we will see how he does his free fall. So he is now at 62 meters. And as you see here, he is holding on to the line to make sure that he is close to it. And he has now hit the candy cane, grabbed a tag, and he is back on his way up. So we're over two minutes into the dive. He is looking fairly strong. Our first deep safety is going down to meet him. And there is our second safety. Meters. Is it 20 meters? Five, five. 10 meters. 10 meters. He's back up at the surface. Gave the okay sign. <laughs> He has the tag, and we are awaiting the result. White card! And he the white card! Congratulations, Denise! Nice. nice job. So Denis is a Spiro, a surfer, and a long-distance swimmer, and an interesting factoid, a lot of our freedivers here advocate for ocean conservation projects. He actually created a foundation to protect sharks. They've been protected in Tahiti, or on Tikihau, his particular island, since 2006, and it is one of the largest shark sanctuaries in the world. I'm going to make friends with Denny so I can surf in Tahiti with him. Maybe hang out with some sharks? Yeah, I need a place to stay. <laughs> I won't hang out with any sharks, but I'll, I'll support him from the beach. Hello everyone, so we are at the Vertical Blue 2021 Freediving Competition. We have already had several strong dives here, a national record attempt and a win. Well, not a win, but he did get a national record. Um, and then we do have another diver coming up soon.
pretty incredible to see this. I've never experienced this before, so it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty beautiful. This is also my first time being at a depth free diving competition, and it has been so exciting getting to know a lot of these amazing free divers and cheer them on. And just if anyone's confused on, on my questions, I don't know anything about free diving. I was brought here to experience this first time. She's the expert. So I'm going to be asking a lot of ridiculous questions for the next couple weeks. Yeah, and Four just minutes. so you know, we Four are going minutes. to be streaming this on YouTube for B as in Victor, B as in boy free diving. So you can follow it live and cheer on your favorite free divers. So next we have Sahika Erkuman. Uh, she is from Turkey and she is getting ready for her dive. She has announced a constant weight dive to 87 meters with an announced dive time of 2 minutes and 57 seconds. So the competition's not grouped in sections of how they're diving, correct? Uh, yeah, so usually it, it varies on the free diving competition, mm -hmm. um, but for today, our deepest divers are going to go in the middle of the day just to make sure that a lot of our free diving safeties are warmed up and everything is going smoothly. And then we have our other divers on either side, which they may be the deepest for them, um, but they are going to be just a little bit shallower. And when I'm saying shallower, shallower doesn't mean anything. A lot of these divers are diving up to 90 meters. Mm -hmm. So if you think 10 meters is 33 feet. So that is very, very deep. So this is a national record attempt for Sahika and she is currently doing her relaxation phase and getting ready for her dive. Two minutes. One minute. Beginning her dive. Constant weight. 
80 meters. Let's go, Sahika. Dive time is 257. National record. 20 meters. 30, 30, 30 meters. first depth free diving competition here. It has been quite interesting seeing the different free diving styles of our free divers. If, if you saw before with a few of the other free divers, they had a higher frequency of their fin kick um, and they were smaller amplitudes, so very smaller kicks. Mm -hmm. um, she has larger and less frequent ones, so we're going to see how this plays out in the dive. So I've had the opportunity to speak with Sahika, and an interesting fact is she actually had asthma as a child, um, but she's won over 100 national and international medals. Um, so for anybody who might be interested in getting into freediving, and oh, and there she goes, she has hit the candy cane, has the tag and is on her way up. But for anybody who is interested in freediving and may have potential concerns due to health issues, there are people that can evaluate you if you are still interested in getting into free diving. So now she is on her way up. She's looking very strong. So you're allowed to have a headlamp? Yes. On. Yes, and she actually has a headlamp. It just provides a little bit of peace of mind. That you're yeah. able to see the dive line. You're able to see the tag because it does get fairly dark down there as we can see. So the dive eye actually has lights on it. Oh, look at all those fish. That was so cool. And so the dive eye does have lights on it to ensure that we are able to see the diver. But as you see here, it's getting brighter and brighter. The first safety has come down to accompany her up to the surface. And the second safety. And she is back up at the surface, doing her recovery breaths. Gosh. And that looked like a very okay. strong dive. <laughs> <laughs> so now we are awaiting the judge response. white card. See, that's yeah. the response I was asking about before. <laughs> Does anyone come out of the water just really happy? Well, it looks like she's the first one we've seen so far today. What a rock star. So congratulations, Zahika. That is a national record. What was interesting, too, is right before, I think it was around... 30 meters, I could be completely wrong with that. She kind of took a, a pause to gain some more energy to come up to the top a little bit faster, which was interesting. I and thought for a second, I was like, oh no. And not to make stop. a cheesy free diving joke, but yes, I was holding my breath and <laughs> hoping to see that it would totally work out. Dad joke. Oh, don't worry. I have a bunch of mermazing and fantastic jokes for you. <laughs> That has to feel unbelievable. Look at that smile on her face. Yeah.
Okay, our next competitor in the water is Kristen Kuba from the USA. She has announced a constant weight dive of 80 meters. Four minutes. Kristen Kuba is a freediving instructor based out of the USA in Oahu, and she has four national records. Go, Kristen. As you can see here, she has a very different dive style than Sahika. 
actually has a shorter amplitude. 30 meters. She has already hit the sink face. Amazing seeing the ocean go from green to blue to just black. Yeah. 50 meters. 50 meters. So she's sitting a lot closer to the rope than was. Yes, that is correct. Oh, and she grabbed the line and doing an early turn. Early turn. So as you see, she did not hit the candy cane. She did not grab the tag. She had an early turn. And sometimes that can happen, especially if there's an equalization issue. If a free diver just doesn't feel good about a dive, they can turn and come back up again. 50 meters. She's at 51 meters, still looking strong. Our second meters. safety has just gone down, so we will be seeing them in the frame of the monitor very, very soon. 45. 30 meters. First safety. And is there something that they really look for second before safety. they help? Is there a signal or anything that she gives them to, to let them know that she needs help? So a lot of uh, the safeties are going to be looking for any change in the freediver's style. So a lot of these freediving safeties have been training with the, or diving with the divers for the last several weeks. They've gotten familiar with the diver's style. So if a diver is slow, if they start to exhale bubbles, or if they start to twitch, then the diver is going to grab them and bring them back to the surface. So Kristen is now safely at the surface. Her recovery breaths. <laughs> I'm okay. Giving the okay sign to the judges. Great. losses of motor control, you didn't see any twitching, so she had a fairly clean dive, she just didn't go as deep as she wanted to. So if she doesn't reach the depth that she originally planned on, do they still count however far she went down? They will, but there will be a penalty associated with it. Okay. And hopefully we'll get the opportunity to speak with our judges later, uh, if anybody is interested in learning about how the scoring process works. really impressed with the safety team. They seem very on it. They're very observational. Absolutely. So for any new divers or new people that are joining us during this live stream, uh, we have three safeties in the water. One safety will meet the diver at 30 meters on their way back up. So for anybody who speaks in feet, that is at 100 feet. Uh, the second free diving safety will meet the free diver at 20 meters, which is going to be 60 feet. Oh, sorry, did my math wrong. My coffee hasn't kicked in. So 30 meters is about 100 feet, 20 meters is about 60 feet, and the last diver is at the surface. So here we also have Enchante Gallardo. She is doing a constant weight five fins dive and she is from the US. She has announced a dive of 80 meters.
So what is this here? Constant weight BF? Yes, so BF does not stand for boyfriend, it stands for bifins. Okay, just making sure. So, Enchanté, her personal best in bifens, according to the Edo competition website, is 81 meters. Uh, she has an announced depth of 80 meters for this dive, so maybe she's just playing it a little bit safe since it is her first dive of the competition. One minute. Chante is looking relaxed. She's at 43 meters. So because she has the bi fins on, mm -hmm. she has the lanyard on her wrist. Yes. That's different, right? Compared to no fins, where a freediver is diving with no fins and they're just using a modified breast stroke, mm -hmm. um, the lanyard can go on the wrist, yes. Uh, if you are doing no fins, um, the lanyard on the wrist can make it a little bit more efficient for you because you're having to manage your lanyard while you're doing your dive. 
Oh, and she looks like she made an early turn there at 71 meters. And she is on her way back up again. She's still looking strong though. Still looking nice and relaxed. 40 meters. First safety has met her at 30 meters. Second safety has met her at roughly 23 meters. She's up. All right, she's doing her recovery breaths, gave the okay sign. And she has a smile on her face, so that's a positive. And she has just received a yellow card. So she didn't quite reach her goal of 80 meters, however, she does have the opportunity to re-attempt this dive at any point during the competition. As I said, every diver has the opportunity to dive six times during a competition. So does it tend to be the issue is equalizing? Yeah, I see that happening fairly often. If you have an early turn and say, for example, when you were out snorkeling today, you said, ah, there's a pain in my ears. I went down one meter. You went down one meter? One meter, and I had to turn around. And so a lot of people who take their first free diving course learn to equalize that. So uh -huh. what happens is when you are going down in depth, the pressure increases, and that pushes on your eardrums, which mm -hmm. can cause pain. And so in a free diving course, what you will learn is how to equalize that pressure by pushing air from your lungs or your throat, depending on how advanced you are, up to balance that pressure out. And so sometimes when divers are diving fairly deep, they run out of the air to be able to do that. And that can be a reason for an early turn. Interesting. It's windy up here. If, uh, if there was any question of me being seasick, I've realized I'm not, which is nice. Congratulations. Thank you. It's a little bit stormy today. However, we both got a morning swim in and yes. don't have to be in wetsuits, so it is very, very warm and welcoming compared to some of the free diving that I normally do up in Washington, where the water can be 40 degrees, 40 degrees Fahrenheit, by the way. Ooh. Very chilly. Yeah, I grew up surfing in New Jersey. When the water gets down to 35, 34 degrees. Oof. And yeah. then were you in a wetsuit? Yes. Wearing a 543 hood, boots, gloves. We used to put Vaseline on our faces because of the wind. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, gross. You know, so this four, is a lot better. A 543 wetsuit is what I actually started free diving in. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so now we have our next diver in the water. This is Mathieu Duvault. He is a Canadian national record holder. He has an announced dive depth of 80 meters, and this is a constant weight dive.
So Matthew is doing a constant weight dive. Yes. So his personal best uh, for bifins, uh, actually CWT, so hopefully we will see if he is in a monofin. Can't see quite right now. Um, but some of his personal bests are around 90 meters. So he's doing an 80 meter dive, first dive of the competition. Machu is based in Tulum, where he is also an underwater photographer and gets to train in the cenotes. There's quite a bit of the competitors that live in Tulum, right? Correct. I've met multiple here. So have you ever been to Mexico? I have. Have you been to one of the cenotes? No. So for anybody who has not been to Mexico, a cenote is an underwater cave. A lot of them have a significant amount of depth and they are amazing conditions for freedivers to train in because they don't have a current and conditions are very stable. So How deep is this here? Uh, this this is 202 meters deep. It is the second deepest blue hole in the world. In the world. Where's the first? Uh, that is in China. That is called the Dragon Hole, and it is 300 meters deep or 1,000 feet. So Michu is getting ready for his dive, so we are going to be quiet until he is below the surface. So Mathieu is now at 20 meters, he's looking strong. He has the monofin on. He has the monofin on, so this is the constant weight with the monofin. Would that be called a merman? Yeah, absolutely. Merman. So some of the freedivers here have actually gotten to play with some mermaid tails while they are here. However, they are not nearly as efficient as the competitive monofins that these people are diving on. The monofins for allow, allow for a lot of efficiency with just one kick. And that is why the majority of the world records are done with a monofin. He has just hit the bottom plate, grabbed a tag, and he's on his way back up again. He is now 
now at 45 meters, looking strong. And our first safety has just come into frame. Second safety is now in frame. He has now reached the surface, doing his recovery breaths. Nose clip is off. He has just given the okay sign with a huge smile. Let's see what the judges say. And he gets... Oh, there he shows the tag. And white card! White card! Nice job, Congratulations. Matthew. Congratulations! All smiles. And I'm so sorry for anybody listening to this in headphones. I was clapping next to the mic. Huge apologies. I hope I didn't hurt your ears. I was just so happy. He did such an amazing dive. Did a great job. Where does Matthew train out of? So he trains out of Tulum. That's um, right, you said that. And he's in a Sanofi. So Mathieu is actually a new father as of April, and his child is out there watching him on the beach. So maybe we will have a new baby freediver into the freediving community. Cute. And again, for everybody listening, or if you're new, I'm jumping on right now. This is my first time at a freediving competition. So if you're watching this alone or with a significant other, you can now invite your neighbors to come over and watch it. And they'll learn about free diving along the way with me as I ask very beginner questions. Hopefully by the end of it, I'll be less of a beginner. Maybe an expert. Maybe he'll be an expert. Maybe an expert. You'll probably go to 100 meters by the end of this competition. Maybe correct? five meters. Maybe five if meters. If I can make five meters, I'd be, I'd be happy with myself. We could probably make that happen. <laughs> All right, so our next diver is Junga Kim from Korea. She has been freediving for seven years, and five of those are spent in Peng Lao. For those who aren't familiar with Peng Lao, Peng Lao is in the Philippines, and it is one of those amazing places where you can get immediate death just a very, very short swim from shore. Yeah, what's so fascinating about this spot is it's so close to the beach. It drops off very drastically. I would say 25 feet from the beach. Yeah, it is a very, very short swim from the beach. Um, it has been interesting coming here for the very first time. Um, it is useful to have a car when you're in the area. Uh, a lot of these freedivers have had to rent cars and share rides to and from the dive location. But once you're here, it is absolutely amazing diving conditions. It's beautiful. So Junga has seven Korean national records. Uh, I won't be going into them here. We're just going to get ready for her dive. She's doing a free immersion dive to 77 meters.
ready for her diet. divers out there uh, who are interested in learning about nose clips, that is what she is wearing on her nose right now. As she is doing a free immersion dive, this is where she is pulling herself down the line. And when you are diving, you usually have your hand on your face to equalize. That nose clip allows her to not have to do that and focus on the dive, just pulling herself down the line. One minute. A lot of upper body strength. Absolutely. And as you can see here, she has some very long reaches. Mm -hmm. She has hit the sink phase though. And is at 53 meters. Grab the tag, candy. and that tag is currently in her wetsuit hood. She's pulling herself back up to the surface. So how do they know when they hit the candy cane? Because they don't have their eyes open, correct? You don't have your eyes open. Sometimes divers will have a dive computer um, in their hood, so they can sometimes hear an alarm. Okay. Um, but you would know because that lanyard will stop you. Uh, if you look on future dives during the candy cane, there's actually a bottom stopper that stops the lanyard and allows the diver not to go any further. That has to be a very interesting feeling to not see where you're going and you just have to wait for the lanyard to stop. Yeah, I just got into diving with a nose clip for the first time last year and it was definitely something to get used to. Her safety is in frame at 28 meters. She is looking nice and relaxed. Our second safety is in frame. 18 meters. She looks like she's slowing down a little bit, but this could also be because we're, our frame of reference is a little hard to notice. At a certain point in time, you become positively buoyant on yes. your way back up again. So it allows you to save energy if you float your way back up and are still pulling yourself up less frequently. She is back up at the surface. 
nose clip is coming off and she gave the okay sign with a huge smile. And she and gets a white card. card. Congratulations, Juma. Great job. So now the safety team is pulling up the dive line for our final diver of this act. So does the safety team check out the competitors that make it up with the white card or do they just let them go right to the beach or does everyone get so checked every, out afterwards? Every diver, when they are doing their dive within within 30 minutes I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong at a future point, but they, the divers are going to have to check in with the medical team at some point after their dive, just to make sure that they are safe and okay to dive for future dives. That is us on the floating houseboat. So I believe this is the last dive of this session. And we will be coming back at 11 o'clock, but we are going to take a camera break after here. So if you want to bring snacks, popcorn, take a bathroom break, take a swim, which is going to happen in our case. Make a pizza. You have half an hour. So our final diver for this session is Alex Davis. He is from Barbados. He is doing a constant weight by fins dive, an announced depth of 76 meters with a dive time of two minutes and 40 seconds. So this is interesting. He's getting ready. I haven't seen this yet. He's getting ready with his face down in the water with a snorkel. And sometimes this can be because when your face is immersed in the water, uh, that triggers something called a mammalian dive reflex. So your body is actually doing some amazing things to make sure that you are able to dive safely. 
go over that once he is under the water. We're going to stay quiet for the remainder of his time at the surface. record attempt so we are hoping for a clean dive and a new national record so as we were saying before a potential reason why he might be doing his breath up with his face down is something called mammalian dive reflex which is triggered by putting your face in cold water your heart rate will actually slow to help you conserve more oxygen and especially when people are diving to deeper depths you're going to have vasoconstriction of the arteries or the blood vessels in your periphery, so all that blood will go to your core and keep your chest cavity safe. If you look at future dives, especially when divers get deep, uh, their abdomens will compress up and into their rib cage. Something really unique to be looking for. A lot of freedivers who've been competing and training for a long time have built up a lot of flexibility in their diaphragm and intercostal muscles, which are the muscles in between your ribs. He is at 74 meters now. Hit the candy cane. Hit the candy cane. Grab that tag. Come on, Alex. Let's go. First safety is just now in frame. Alex is looking strong though. Second safety is in frame and they are escorting him to the surface. He is still looking quite strong though. his recovery breaths. Mask off. Gave the okay sign. We 
showing them the tag. White card. And white card. That is a new national record for Barbados. Congratulations, Alex. Great job, Alex. And as you see around his neck there, you were asking about how a diver knows where they are. Yep. You see that wristband around his neck? Yes. And that is a dive computer. And he wore goggles. Yes. And which so, not everyone did. And which is interesting to note because for any new free divers, um, when you are equalizing your ears, you're also having to take the air that's in your lungs to equalize your mass. So not only is he having to make sure that his ears are staying safe, um, but he is also putting some of the air into his mask. And he did a super strong dive with the mask on. Yeah, I can only imagine the pressure. Okay, so that was the first session of the Vertical Blue 2021 Freediving Competition. We will be coming back in a half an hour, so go make your pizza. I'm going to make a pizza. Make the pizza, get a swim in, and come see us in another half an hour. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us.